In this devlog, I'm going to show you how I created a build mode inspired by The Sims. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Hippo, a 19 year veteran of the game industry, with most of my experience in animation and technical art. For the past few years, I've been working on my own action RPG, a nameless venture for now. Enough about that, let's get back to the main event. In my search for a highly polished and intuitive build mode, I ended up taking yet another look at The Sims. You can construct walls, add a roof and decorate with furniture, all in a few swift moves. Replicating this kind of functionality in my game was a daunting challenge, but here's how I approached it. The build mode in The Sims is an intricate system with a lot of moving parts. To make it digestible, I'm going to divide it into three primary components. The camera, the grid, and the tools. First up, the camera. The Sims uses a fairly simple top-down camera system. It moves, it turns, it zooms. Luckily, I already had a similar camera system from a previous project. Here's a breakdown. I track the mouse movement from the last frame to determine how much to rotate the camera. For movement, I capture the W, A, S, D inputs, which provide movement on a flat plane. Since the camera operates in 3D space, I translate this 2D movement into 3D based on the camera's orientation. But to keep the motion suitable for a top-down view, I ensure it stays parallel to the ground. Instead of moving the camera directly, I apply this movement to an invisible focal point. The camera follows this point, and the distance is controlled by the mouse wheel, completing the system. Moving on to the second component, the grid. The grid in The Sims is pretty straightforward. Your cursor moves where you want, snapping to the closest point on the ground as you move around. To make this happen, I first figure out where the mouse is pointing in the game world. Then, I snap that position to the nearest grid point. When a player places an object, I store it in a list along with its grid location. This allows me to save and load what players build. The list also helps me check if a player can place an object by comparing the chosen location with the locations of existing objects. Time to add the fun stuff, the tools. The Sims build mode offers a lot of tools, but I focused on the essentials. Walls, rooms, windows, doors, stairs, and decorative objects. Each tool is designed with custom interactions to make building easy and intuitive. Starting with the wall tool, whenever I click on the grid, the game records the mouse position. I then create wall pieces that connect these points, maintaining clean 90 degree angles. The room tool builds on this by creating a cube that starts at the first click and ends at the second. One challenge I faced was with wall height. In The Sims, walls have a fixed height, which works well for standard houses, but feels limiting when you want to get creative with different types of structures. To give players more freedom, I made each wall piece one unit per grid cell. This way, walls can be stacked, allowing players to adjust the height to their liking. For windows, the tool checks if there's a valid wall where the mouse is pointing. It removes a wall piece and places a window in that spot. The door tool works similarly but replaces two wall pieces instead of one. Stairs were a bit more complicated. In The Sims, stairs are easy to place because rooms have a fixed height, making floor connections predictable. Since my build mode allows for any shape and size, I made stair placement a two-click process, similar to the room tool. It's functional but still needs some tweaking to make it feel more intuitive. Placing them just right can be a head-scratcher. Creating the tool for decorative objects was relatively straightforward. Instead of using the grid system like in The Sims, I decided to let objects be placed wherever the mouse is pointing, giving players extra control. In The Sims, you can hold Alt to achieve something similar, but I decided to make it the default behavior in my build mode. I feel like there's something missing, something to gel the structures just a little bit better. How about a support beam? This time I connect two grid positions together with no angle restrictions. Now I feel like I have creative control to make things really look weird. And now the tools are done. Sure, there's a lot of polish that's missing that makes the build mode in The Sims a pleasant experience. From a proof of concept point of view, I'm gonna call it done. I 
have one last thing that I want to show before I end this video. So the build mode is technically more of a design mode. It's only meant as a mode where players can design their buildings. And that's why I prefer to call them schematics. Once you design your buildings, you order your citizens to start building them using the resources around them. I made a very rough prototype of this, but I did not get very far with it because something was nagging at me. Something was changing. This project began as an enormous project, mostly for me to experiment with all the wild ideas that came to mind. The full vision is still a dream game for me, but I always knew that it was completely unreasonable for me to complete this all by myself. Instead, I saw it as an opportunity for me to reignite my passion for game development. However, the need to release something eventually has been growing day by day. And for that to happen, a shift in the game's direction was unavoidable. In the next couple of devlogs I'm going to talk about the game as a whole. These devlogs have been a little bit all over the place. I wouldn't blame you if you were pretty confused about what the game even is. For those of you who are interested, this build mode demo is available on my Patreon and the Unreal project is also available for the highest tier. That's it.